Good morning. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. The Lord of glory be with you. The Lord bless you. And the Lord bless you, Matt. And also with you. Thank you very much. And a happy new year. Happy new year. We've happy made year. it to 2022. Unbelievable, but true. How do you feel about that? Fantastic. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. On top of the world. On top of the world. Yeah. And you're excited about the, the new year? New year, new opportunities. Yeah. Any resolutions? Uh, that it may be at least as good as the past year, Excellent. if not better. That might not be too hard, actually. I wonder what, uh, what your feeling is at this stage of, of new year. But I hope you're feeling hopeful and positive. This morning service is full of light and full of hope because this Sunday, the 2nd of January, we're celebrating the Feast of the Epiphany. Now, I guess if we put most people on the spot and said, what does Epiphany mean? They would think, Epiphany means manifestation. And so in the church calendar in January, we have three Sundays that typically follow the visit of the wise men. And then we have the baptism of Jesus. And then we have the wedding at Cana and the turning of the water into wine. And in each stage, there's a manifestation of Christ. So today we have the uh, manifestation, manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles. The wise men, of course, weren't Jewish. They came from, from abroad, if you like. So the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles. Jesus' baptism is the manifestation of Jesus as the Son of God. God says, this is my Son. And then the wedding at Cana and that miracle of water into wine, the first miracle of Jesus, is seen as the manifestation of his glory. And so we see that theme rolling out over the coming weeks. And this morning, it's really exciting because we have a, a guest preacher. Yes. Iris. Yeah. Uh, Iris, of course, a member of our congregation, is preaching this morning. She'll introduce herself when she preaches. Delighted to have her bringing a fresh look at a well-known story of the wise men this morning. Do join in wherever you are and whoever you're with. And we say this every time, but it really helps. Join in with the liturgy. Join in with the songs. Put something in the chat. Say good morning. Let us know that you're there. Uh, respond to the piece and all of those things. And let's create a sense of community as we worship together this morning. And we're going to do that by singing our opening carol. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee.
We're going to say the psalm together for this Sunday. Now, this psalm was a psalm that was written actually uh, towards Solomon, who was the king of Israel. But of course, these psalms that speak of the king also anticipate the Messiah. And in this psalm, you will see echoes of our reading to what we're going to have in a few minutes from Matthew chapter 2 and the visit of the wise men. So let's say this. Would you join in, please, with the words in bold? The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall pay tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring gifts. All kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall do him service. For he shall deliver the poor that cry out, the needy and those who have no helper. He shall have pity on the weak and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and dear shall be their blood in his sight. Long may he live. Unto him may be given gold from Sheba. May prayer be made for him continually, and may they bless him all the day long. And as we come before our God in adoration, as those wise men did 2,000 years ago, let's also come before our God in penitence, as we bring before him the things that we need to confess, the things we need to bring into his saving light. Should we take a moment to be quiet and ask the Holy Spirit what things we need to bring into the light of Christ's forgiveness and his healing. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. So let us confess our sins. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, let's sing again, and another great carol that also hints at this theme of epiphany as well. Thou who was rich beyond all splendour. Say 
So this morning we're thinking about the wise men and the visit to the baby Jesus and Iris will be preaching for us in a moment and unpacking that story for us. Uh, before she does that, Diana is going to read the passage for us. Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. I just quickly want to introduce myself. I'm Iris and I will preach today. Um, before we begin and dive into God's word, I would like to start with a short prayer. So please join. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this new year and all the new opportunities uh, that lie ahead. Uh, we want to thank you that we are able to study your word this morning. And we pray that with the help of your Holy Spirit, that you will open our minds and our hearts to the truths that you want us to hear this morning. And we pray so in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the story of the wise men visiting Jesus, it is such a nice story. And it um, it brings so much joy when a baby is born. Uh, I can know because we only had uh, a baby in the family ourselves a couple of weeks ago a little niece was born and i can just remember the excitement the joy when the call came in and that we knew that the baby was safe and healthy and we were just so thankful thankful for the new life ahead so I can only imagine what it was like for the wise men to see the star and know that not only a king was born, but the Messiah. It must have been so exciting and so exhilarating to know that, that our Savior was born. So let us look a bit more closely to the passage today um, and see what we can learn. Because who were these wise men and why did they even take an interest and what is the significance of their gifts and what can we learn from them? Those are just a couple of questions that I want to quickly go over today. So let us start. Well, first of all, who were these wise men and what do we know of them? Well, let us start with verse 2. Magi from the East came. Notice that it says Magi uh, and not wise men. Wise men is usually um, used. Um, Magi basically were wise men or, well, sometimes they are translated as kings, but were probably more scholars. Uh, and it doesn't mention a number. 
So the Bible doesn't tell us that there were three. It is tradition that tells us that there were three. But biblically speaking, the three kings and the three wise men in the nativity scene is, well, incorrect. We don't know how many uh, came, which was astonishing to me because I didn't even know that the Bible didn't say this, that the Bible said this. What we also can see in this verse is that they came from the east. Well, east is very broad terms, but it's probably Persia where they came from um, or modern day Iran. Uh, we know that they traveled about 1400 kilometers to visit Christ um, and that they were not Jews. We, they were not part of Israel. Uh, most likely the wise men knew of the prophecy of Daniel. We know, of course, uh, the prophet Daniel was the chief uh, at the court of Sears in Persia. And in Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 to 27, uh, it includes a prophecy of the timeline of the birth of the Messiah. Um, the wise men may also have been aware of a prophecy of Balaam, who was a prophet from the town of Petor on the Euphrates River near Persia. And we can read about his prophecy in Numbers, for uh, chapter 24, verse 17. And it, uh, Balaam's prophecy specifically mentions a star coming out of Jacob, which is, of course, the star that the wise men saw. So if we look uh, further into the passage and we go down to verse 11, it says, On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Notice that the word house is used and not stable. Uh, it is actually um, known that the wise men took their time traveling 1400 kilometers. As you can imagine, they of course, didn't have any trains or planes or those kinds of things. So it took them a long time. And it is believed that it could have been even two years before they visited Jesus. Jesus was already living in his home with Mary and Joseph. And uh, this is probably also the reason why Herod ordered the slaughter of the little boys of two years and under because of this reason. In verse 16 later, uh, we didn't read this today, it says he, Herod, was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. After the wise men found Christ, they humbled themselves and gave their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh and worshipped him. So let's go over these three gifts. Why did they give, give these gifts? Um, and what do they mean? Is there a, symboli a symbolism behind it? Um, well, let's have a look. So first we have gold. Of course, gold is and was a very valuable commodity. It is even possible that the gold that the wise men gave to Joseph and Mary actually financed their journey to Egypt after Herod uh, ordered the slaughter of the boys. Uh, tradition says that gold is actually a symbolism of divinity. Uh, we can read about this as well in the Bible, that the Ark of the Covenant was overlaid with gold. You can read more about this in Exodus 25, verses 10 till 17. So presenting the gift of gold was a symbol for recognizing Christ's divinity, God in the flesh. The second gift they gave was frankincense. And that is really a white raisin or gum. And it is obtained by cutting uh, into a tree, making incisions in the bark and allowing the gum to flow out. And it smells really nice when it's burned and was therefore used in worship. Uh, burning frankincense was also a pleasing offer to God. And we can read more about this as well in Exodus. 
and Exodus 30, verse 34. Frankincense is a symbol of righteousness and holiness. And by giving this, the wise men recognized Christ and his sacrifice, uh, his willing sacrifice of giving his life for us. It's really, these gifts really just are already prophecies or foreboding what happens to Christ in, later in his life. We can also see this in the last gift, myrrh. Uh, myrrh was also a product from Arabia and it was obtained the same way as frankincense. Uh, it was a spice and it was used in embalming and sometimes it was made into a drink. And some scholars even think that the drink that was offered Jesus um, when he was about to be crucified was uh, myrrh. Uh, we can read more about this uh, in Mark 15, verse 23. Myrrh symbolizes bitterness, suffering, and affliction, which is, again, foreboding for Christ's life when he gave his life on the cross for all who would believe in him. So that's just a quick reminder of the significance of these gifts that the wise men gave. Well, after they presented their gifts, uh, they worshipped Christ and then returned home. And they went another route, as we read, uh, because God warned them in a dream that they shouldn't go back to Herod. So at this point, we, well can conclude three things about these wise men. The first is that they were not Jews. The second, they read and believed God's word. Uh, again, Daniel and uh, the prophecy of Balaam. And they went out to seek Jesus. They traveled to him, to his home and worshipped him. So is there something that we as modern day people can learn from the wise men? And what is it? It seems like such an easy question. Um, but I really want to look closely at the three things that we noticed in the passage and see what it could mean for us today. So the first one, the Jews of the, the Magi were not Jews. This might be, as we say in Dutch, an open door. Uh, but it is important to notice that one of the first people who came down to Je who came down and sought Jesus and recognized him as the Messiah, and that they were non-Jewish people, it is actually already uh, a, the first sign of the fulfillment of. God's promises in the Old Testament when he promises that he will make a new covenant for all people uh, to include non-Jewish people, also called Gentiles, has been God's plan from the start. And Jesus is the one who brings us together. He came as an offering of salvation. He came offering salvation to all people. And the prophet Isaiah already predicted this. He said that uh, he will bring forth justice to the Gentiles and Jesus would be a light to the Gentiles. We can read this in Isaiah 42 verses 1 and 6. Uh, we can also see, of course, in Jesus' ministry uh, that he reached out to Gentiles. Uh, an example of this is Mark uh, chapter 7 verse 26 when Jesus helps a Gentile woman uh, who asked for her daughter's freedom from a demon. And also in the letters of Paul, Paul also says that uh, God meant his covenant for all people, Jews and Gentiles. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. We read this in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. So what can we learn from this? What can we take away from this? God has welcomed us into his family. So what we can take away is that we can rejoice knowing and thanking him for his endless mercy. 
So let's look at the second thing that we observed about the wise men. They read and believed God's word. This is amazing for people who were not used to actually know the word of God. And remember, even Herod had to ask the chief leaders of scripture about what it said about the birth of Messiah. Verse 4, we can read this. Uh, When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. Herod himself didn't even know. So how can this relate to us? How much time do we spend with the word and with scripture? And this might be a bit of an uncomfortable question for some. Well, it is at least for me. Do you spend enough time with the word? Let us think about this for a second. We hear about God in church. We might listen to podcasts and maybe other outlets. So why is reading the Bible so important if we have all these different kinds of information that we can learn from the Bible? Well, unfortunately, we don't have time to go into all the different answers to this question, but I just really want to highlight one. Jesus said in John 6, verse 35, I am the bread of life. By equating himself with bread, Jesus is saying this that he is essential in life. And he does not mean physical life, uh, but he means eternal life. And where do we learn about Jesus? In the Bible, in the Word of God. So the Bible, the Word of God, should be treated like bread and not an occasional snack. So I therefore want to encourage you today to look into your own heart and to look at the example of the wise men. They studied scripture so much that they knew the Messiah, our Savior, was born. So be encouraged by this and see if you maybe can commit a certain time every day to spend with the word. If you find this difficult, because I can imagine that it can be difficult, we have such busy lives, There are different uh, apps and uh, booklets to help you. Um, I'm a big fan of the Bible in One Year app. It is developed by Nicky Gumbel. Uh, He also developed the Alpha course and the Marriage course. Uh, And it's really worth checking out. There are different types of plans that you can sign up for, uh, either the whole Bible in one year, which will take you about 20 to 25 minutes every day, or just the key verses, which is just 10 minutes a day. So it is really worth checking out, and it's free. Um, So let us seek Jesus in the Word and spend time with Him. And this also leads me to our third point. The wise men went out to seek Jesus. It is an amazing thought that the wise men left their home, traveled 1400 kilometers to look for Jesus. Some of you might think, so what? I'm already Christian. I found Jesus. I know who he is. Well, uh, as some of you might know, I'm a big fan of The Chosen. The Chosen is a crowdfunded multi-seasonal series about Jesus's life. It's free to watch on app, YouTube, um, all the media outlets. Well, in the first episode, it shows Jesus freeing Mary Magdalene from demons. And then she follows Jesus and she um, tries to read the word and learn scripture. And during their travels, they encounter a man who's possessed by demons. And... This throws Mary back to unpleasant memories and she flees to the city and falls back into her old ways. Well, two of the disciples try to convince her to come back, but she doesn't feel worthy to go back to Jesus after all he already did for her. And in the end, she goes to him, meets him, 
and she stands in front of him and she doesn't dare to look at him because she's afraid that he might be angry, disappointed. And Jesus says to her, look up. And she does. And then Jesus says, I forgive you. And this is such a key moment in the series. The reason I tell you this is because that's what Jesus wants us to do. Look up, look to him, find him, look for him. He knows that we will stumble and that we will sin. He just wants us to look for him, to give our hearts to him, and he will forgive us our wrongdoings if we ask for it. The New Testament is full of other examples where people went out to find Jesus. So please, I would encourage you to do so as well. Looking for Jesus, keep looking for Jesus and come back to him every time. So what can we learn from these wise men? They looked for Jesus just as we are supposed to. I do realize that some might have trouble with this. Uh, Jesus might seem far away. But remember, Jesus himself said in Matthew uh, chapter 28, verse 20, Jesus is speaking, And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. The only question that remains for us is how do we find him? And as Jesus said, he is everywhere. Spend time reading scripture. Listen to worship songs. Spend time in prayer. So rejoice this Sunday with me, knowing our Savior is with us always. And that he's waiting for us and calling us and calling out to us to find him and spend time with him. Because remember, wise men still seek him. So as we are about to close, I just want to reflect on the things that we talked about this morning. What can we learn from the wise men? Well, first, the wise men were not Jews. And we can be thankful to God and his son for his endless mercy and the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies and promises. Second, the wise men read and believed God's word. And we are invited to search our hearts to see if we spent enough time with the living word. And thirdly, the wise men went out to seek for Jesus. Do we seek Jesus in our daily lives? Jesus might feel far away, but he is with us always. Let us turn to him and keep seeking his presence. So to conclude, let us be thankful for the wise men and their example. And let us pray that we may take an example from them and apply their wisdom into our daily lives. So as we close now, I would like to close as we started in prayer. Father, may the word we have read, Lord, be planted deeply in our hearts and in our minds. Help us not to walk away and forget it, but to meditate on it and obey it, and so build our life on the rock of your truth. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Iris. Thank you very much. We're going to respond in worship. Let's sing together, as with gladness, men of old.
We're going to affirm our faith now, and let's do that using the words of the Nicene Creed. We say this together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Time now for our intercessions and Marion is going to lead us. Dear Lord, at the start of a new year, we thank you for your ongoing love and care for us. Help us to recognize you as Lord day by day in this new year. You are Emmanuel, God with us, and we pray that in the year to come we will daily be like the shepherds who came to see Jesus and were filled with deep joy and wonder. And we bring you the offerings of our, of our prayers like the Magi came to bring their gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we all deeply hope for an end of the pandemic in the new year, for things to be better. Hear us as we pray for those who suffer in this ongoing COVID crisis. We pray for the children and teenagers and young adults who suffer from loneliness, depression 
and other mental health problems because of the closing of schools, the cancellation of social activities, sports, outings, youth groups. Fill them with new hope and strength and help all of us to do what we can to bring relief in their situations. We pray for elder people in solitude, for people who face financial problems due to COVID, for people who daily feel the anxiety and fear of corona infections because of a vulnerable health. Protect them, O Lord, and help us not to live in fear, but in trust. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the persecuted church. We pray for children worldwide facing violence, discrimination or bereavement because their parents are Christians. We pray for the workers of Open Doors and other organizations investing in these children through trauma care education to ensure a better future for them. We pray for the people of Afghanistan that face extreme oppression, poverty and discrimination on the Taliban rule, especially women and girls. We pray for protection, relief. Bless the work of the leaders who seeks peace and the protection of human rights. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Phil and Linda Gottschalk, now in the US, and their work of teaching and training students in theology programs in Ukraine and Tyndale in the Netherlands. May they be filled with your wisdom when they study your word and educate future pastors, missionaries, professors who choose to work in your kingdom. May they be filled with your strength and inspiration day by day and may you bless the treatment of Linda's arthritis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church community, for Ruin, Lisette, Met, Lizelle, Mercedes, our church wardens, and for all volunteers who work in our church to make it possible that online services continue and the work of our church continues. And we pray that in this new year, you will daily fill them all with wisdom, energy and inspiration. Protect them for working too hard and help them to find moments, days and longer periods of rest, relaxation and recharging. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. In a moment of silence we pray for our loved ones and our personal needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We believe, O Lord, Help us overcome our unbelief. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And we pray the collect for today. Dear Lord, Creator of the heavens, who led the Magi by a star to worship the Christ child, guide us and sustain us that we may find our journey's end in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Well, time now for some notices. Yes. And it is the beginning of the month. It is. Which makes me think that it's time for birthdays. It's you. Yes. Yes. Right. Yep. It is birthdays. Birthdays. So if you've got a birthday in the month of January, would you please stand up now so that we can see you? Yes. Very good. Thank you very much. And we're going to sing Happy Birthday for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Wow, it doesn't get better than that, does it? Doesn't. Let's pray for you. Heavenly Father, we pray for our birthday boys and birthday girls for the coming month. We ask your blessing on them. Bless their birthday itself, but also walk with them through every day of the coming year and make your presence real to them. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And just a reminder for the services, uh, next week we are still uh, only online as long as uh, lockdown continues. Um, that is the 9th of January, then afterwards is the 16th of January. Everything is still up, up in the air about that. So we're waiting to hear, waiting for recommendations, uh, uh, guidelines from the CIO waiting to hear from the government. But in any case, we will be online, of course, because we will continue to be online uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, and if there will be an in-person service and if that will be at the BSN and all of those things, uh, you'll have to uh, look next week. Yeah. Watch next week and then yeah. we can tell you more. Or watch the weekly email. It or watch the weekly be. email. Well, there yes. may not be one in the coming week, I'm not sure. Or follow us on social media. <sighs> so many ways to... Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, of course, also just a reminder about our daily services of daily prayer. Uh, Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 9 a.m., Tuesday and Thursday at 9 p.m. Uh, on Zoom, uh, short daily services, a uh, great way just to connect, to pray together at the beginning or at the end of the day. So if you would like to join us, go to stjames.nl slash daily prayer. And I might just correct you on one thing there. The coming week, it's Monday and Friday morning. Is it? And it's Wednesday night. That's very confusing. And that's that because I we're the wrong notice. It is. And that's because we're still in school holidays. And so we're on a slightly lighter timetable this coming week. Yeah. But then we're back to the full timetable. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Well, let's hope that I remember that. Well, yes. <laughs> let's hope so, eh? Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Never mind. Good. We're going to have the peace. We're going to share the peace together. And let's have some words from Isaiah to introduce the peace. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And with all of you as well. So let's offer one another a sign of that peace. If you're with somebody, do that in person, but put something in the chat or send an app. And as we do that, let's have our closing carol, Go Tell It on the Mountain.
As we draw to the end of this service, we're going to say together an offertory prayer as we bring together all that we give to the work and the ministry of this church, the work of, of the Lord through St. James. Let's say this prayer together. Lord, Lord accept, accept your people's gifts, not, not gold, gold, frankincense or myrrh, but, but hearts and voices raised in praise of Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation. Amen. And let's close with a blessing. May God the Father, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead us in our pilgrimage to find the Lord. May God, who has delivered us from the dominion of darkness, give us a place with the saints in light in the kingdom of his beloved Son. And may the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine in our hearts and fill our lives with his joy and his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen.